So as we on Sherlin is a P2P daemon that you can actually download files um, from the what's it called Nutella 2 network. Um, if you ever use Sherza, it's basically the same network they use. Anyways, um, go ahead and install it. Might not be in your repository, so figure it out how to install it for your distribution. But after that, we're gonna do a uh, configuration setup. So we're gonna do Sherlin dash C. Right, and this one's pretty easy. Most of the time, you're gonna push enter only. So, username, we don't give a fuck. So, hit enter. Listening port, we just use the default there. And enter. And if you want to change the folders for this, you can do, you know, change their completed folders. But when I hit enter, use the default here. If you want to share any folders, you can do that. Like, for example, if you want to share your um, videos folder or. Um, your music folder or something like that, if I spell it right, there you go, music folder, then you would type something like that, but we're not gonna do anything, so we're gonna hit enter, and this one, the hubs, uh, says two or three is, is a reasonable value. Um, we'll put 10, why not? And the download rate, uh, I'm not sure if this is actually the download of the files, but uh, we're gonna do 124 here for one megs. And keep that as normal. Keep that. Enter. Enter. Now this is the important part because uh, we're gonna use the web interface, okay? Because there's no command line to interact with this program, since it's only a daemon. Um, you know, you have to be able to access it with uh, the web UI. They do have Telnet, but it didn't work for me, so I can't really show you the Telnet. Anyways, uh, we're gonna use our our port or whatever port you want. I usually use a thousand off of this, so this one is six, uh, three, four, nine here. I'm gonna use seven, three, four, nine, so one thousand above that. And you hit enter, enter. Telnet, like I said, doesn't work, so I'm gonna disable it. So I just hit enter. Now this one is also important because um, we have the web interface enabled, but we also want to allow our computer to, you know, connect to it. So how do you do that? So first of all, you want to do 127.0.0.1. That's our localhost IP. And we want to do a semicolon. I also want all my devices within my uh, local area network to connect to it. So I'm going to do a range. So my range will be 192.168. Dot one dot one so I want it from one to two five four so I do um, what is that the same thing but we're gonna end it with two five four so basically our um, you know whatever devices that connect uh, from our uh, network beginning with one through uh, two five four then they'll be able to uh, connect to this web interface okay hit enter uh, the max upload, whatever, and now it saves the setting here, right? So that's it for the configuration. Now all you gotta do is type in Sherlin. Uh, the first time it might take a while, like a minute or two, like that. But after it says connected, so now we're we're connected uh, to different hubs here. And since we put ten, it's gonna connect to ten hubs, right? Uh, so now that we know it works here, uh, you, all you do is bust out your web browser. And go to localhost, and the uh, port that we used was uh, was that localhost colon five was that seven three four nine that we used it. So seven three four nine was our port, and this is the uh, program or the web UI here, right? Not really that hard. Uh, the thing that you want to do in here, the first thing is you go to settings, and go down to. Uh, the listening port here, right? This is very important because if you don't have this one open, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to download anything. So all you do is click on the test here, and if you pass it, it'll be green. So this is from uh, shares a test uh, connection here, right? So you have to open your TCP and UDP port, um, and you if you have it in green, like it says congratulations, that means it's all good. If it's not all good, you have to go open the ports. Right, so you have to open port, um, what was that, uh, 6349 here, 
this port. So if you watch my old videos on port forwarding, uh, if you missed it, I'll post you in the description. But basically, you want to port forward, uh, or if you're using a firewall, you have to open your firewall, uh, you know, to allow that port also. So if you're gonna do this for port forty on your router, you give it a name. I call this one Sherlin, and the port that we want to use was uh, six three four nine, and the computer that we're using is this one, and this one is our port again, all right? And since this one is uh, I believe it's both, so it's TCP and UDP. I just put both here, right? And then you apply the changes, and you're good. Uh, so now you'll be able to use, you know, your search functions here, and you can download stuff here. So, for example, let's say we download wallpapers, or we search for wallpapers, and this one is in bytes, megabytes, and kilobytes. So let's say we want the minimum size to be one meg. And you can filter out by you know videos, audio, images, and all that. But we're gonna do any here. And right now at the bottom here it says zero results, but um, that's because it takes time for it to uh, you know find the other ones. And you can also hit this arrow up top here. And this one will actually reload every um, you know 10 seconds or whatever, right? And you see after 10 seconds it will reload, and you see it has more results now. And all you do is click on this sucker here, and you can see all our results. Uh, if you want to re uh, was that refresh manually, you can do refresh here, and I'll manually refresh it, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, so let's say if you want to download any of these things, what do we have in here? Uh, wallpapers. I don't know. Click on this stupid thing. Let's say we click on a bunch of these um, thing here. This one say this one this one and so on and so forth and after you click on that it'll go into your downloads and it should be able to you know download it soon like this one right now is um, it's going at 12 KB all right um, and over here these ones um, basically let me zoom out a little bit here basically right now is the priority is normal so that's why you see the ends uh, the A is for above normal, and this one is for high. So you can actually delegate, you know, which one you want to um, download the quickest or whatever. And here is the, what is that, the uh, percentage. So right now this one is uh, 80, what, 68 percent, and so on and so forth. If you, if you want to click on it, you can click on it. I think you can click on it. Let's go back here. Oh, that one's done, I guess. That's why it didn't work. Let's go back. Uh, let's do the 10 seconds here. Yeah, that one was done. Actually, all of them are done, but only this one is left here. So this one you can actually click on, and you see this one is still being downloaded. So that's why um, you can see um, it's going at 35 KB here, and that's it. Uh, and these ones are the one that's completed that we just uh, downloaded. And once it's completed, it should be in your share here. Uh, the ones that's not completed, or say incomplete right here, right? This one's incomplete, this one's completed, this one's completed, you know, this one's completed, and so on and so forth. So that's how you use uh, Sherlin in a nutshell. It's just a daemon with the web UI, uh, or Telnet, but like I said, the Telnet didn't work. And after you test it out and it works fine for you, um, you probably don't want to use, you know, the way that you were using it. Um, next time, if you wanted to start up the program, you don't need to type in Sherlin like this, right? So you see all these um, stupid uh, outputs. You can also just type in Sherlin dash D, and I'll start it as a daemon process. Um, that's it. That should work, right? Yeah, the daemon right here. And now you still be able to use it, right? But it runs in the background as a daemon. Uh, if you ever want to kill your program, you can do a kill all um, Sherlin. I spell it right. Yeah, Sherlin, and that will stop the daemon in the background, right? And now if you refresh this, it's dead, right? Uh, so again, Sherlin dash D is the daemon. You can actually hit the dash H for help. So the daemon. Uh, the configurations that we did earlier. So if you ever mess up your configurations and you want to do it over. You can do uh, the same thing that we did before. 
and so on and so forth. Um, so that's pretty much it for the program. Uh, if you ever want to use, you know, a the retro P2P client, because BitTorrent is actually popular and all that. But uh, the thing with BitTorrent is that, you know, you need a cedars and all that, and sometimes there's no cedars because uh, the file is not popular enough or whatever. But um, in that case, I usually use, you know, the old school P2P client and uh, if you have a server you probably want to set it up just in case you ever need it it's there for you and you don't have to like you know waste time with uh, other GUI programs or whatever you can just use this web UI and connect it from different computers so that's the good thing about that anyways that's the uh, Sherlin using the uh, Nutella 2 network there's actually other networks you can connect to and I'll check out some other programs to do that but that's it for this one.